How's everybody doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking the body beat down here. Michael on this Friday morning, fresh off the school bus. Getting my morning walk done. Let's touch on a couple of subjects, shall we? Why is my camera always filthy? I'm going to wipe it off. Ready? Why is my camera still filthy? Anyway, so, workout yesterday. See this smile? That's how I went to bed last night. Anyway, deadlifts were a success. I'm getting closer to my 10 rep goal with 405 which for a long time I gave up on because I just couldn't do it not only was my hand a problem with my calluses and all that but there's days when you go, well not you but when I there's days when I go to do 405 and it might as well be, sorry for the moving, sorry. And 405 might as well be 500 pounds. That's how it feels sometimes. So, you know, 405 pounds is still up there. I mean, it's not far from my max. So there's times when 405 pushes my limits just to do a rep. So surely, you know, trying to get 10 reps is really difficult. But then again, I proved yesterday that things can happen. So here's how I approached it. Here's what was going through my mind on that, uh, on that deadlift session. And again, I'm sorry if my camera's all smeary. I can see it in the light. It looks like I went, and I promise I didn't. Maybe, I might have licked it, I don't know. Anyway, when I did my very first rep on 405, that was physically difficult. When I got to my fifth rep, my fifth rep, my fifth rep, <laughs> I can't talk. When I got to my fifth rep, it was mental more than physical because I could have easily, and it went through my mind faster than a blink of an eye, faster than that, however fast that would be. It went through my mind, I could stop at five, a nice even number and be pretty happy with that it's not going to beat my rep PR of seven and a half reps but I'll be happy five reps is good no I instantly faster than the speed of light faster than the speed of light that went through my brain And uh, luckily, I uh, luckily I just kept going, and I reached a new PR of eight reps. Yay, eight reps! Now there was a moment during those uh, at that eighth rep. There was a moment where I said I should go for nine. And of course, that went through my brain just as quickly as, you know, I should stop at five went through my brain. That is one I wish I would have listened to, though. Let me see if I can get that any better. No, that's no better. I'm sorry, guys. My shirt must be covered in Vaseline. 
So anyway, I wish I'd have went for nine. But there's always next time because I got to get 10. So I got to try this again at some point. Now, on to another topic, sort of on the same topic, working out in general, being active in general. As most of you should know by now, if you follow my channel for any time, I have a chronic bad back. It's hurting right now. It feels like my bones need to be ripped apart, broken. It feels like I have a nerve that needs to be severed. Uh, I have no idea what it is, but I've been like this for 25 years now. So I'm in pain every day, all day. That don't mean I'm in horrible, disgusting pain, but I'm in discomfort pretty much all day long. Like I can't be on my feet very long. Flipping a light switch can throw my back completely out. Anything. So, uh, a lot of times you'll have people ask, you know, well, how can you work out if your back is hurt? Well, number one, I've had my bad back for a number of years. I know how to handle stuff. I know how to cope with it. So, you know, it, it's just one of those things. Number two, like I said, I can lift 405 pounds all day long and be okay, or I can flip a light switch and I'm out for a week. It just depends on what my body wants to do. And nothing I do about it. it it's just how it is. So, remember, you can't judge a book by its cover. <clears throat> my wife and my kids can definitely uh, attest to uh, how much pain I've been in since I was about 25 years old. They know. And uh, my oldest son even has a bad back. And he's apologized to me a couple of times uh, because he was doubtful over the years and didn't understand and couldn't, you know, couldn't comprehend how bad my back was and what it felt like. and seeing me crawling around and crying and can't move and all this stuff you know he didn't understand it and he's apologized to me now that he has a bad back that now he truly understands and he's sorry forever you know doubting me or not understanding not taking it seriously but that's the thing you know you don't wish this type of stuff on anyone, but at the same time you do, you'd like for them to just experience it. And then they can, you know, they can understand what you've been going through. So, uh, just because you have, you know, a chronic bad back or chronic bad shoulders or whatever it is you may have, that don't mean that you can't do things. Sometimes you have to adjust what you do. Sometimes you can learn to push through what you do. But even with the most severe back problems, you got to do something. There's been times I couldn't get out of bed here the last couple and a half, two and a half years. And I only say two and a half years because that's when I, that's how long I've been back working out. But 
I've gotten on my bike and went for bike rides. I've spun on my exercise bike. I've walked. I've even done light workouts. Everything with my back completely out. Where most people would be bedridden. That's the worst thing you can do. And I did that for years. Well, my back's out. I'm just going to lay around. Put an ice pack and heat pack and ice pack and heat pack. And sit there and let it rest. You got to move. You got to get that blood moving. You got to get that oxygen moving. You got to work it out. So, got my workout talked about. We got back problems talked about. Now let's talk about depression. Since I hurt my back at the ripe old age of 25-ish, you know, still a kid, I've suffered from depression. That's when it started. And I've talked about this before. But depression is something we need to talk about. Because a lot of people suffer and they don't even know it. My wife is one. So... I hurt my back when I was roughly 25. Pulling concrete is the only thing I can trace it back to. So, uh, and then I had my first marital problems in 99. That about did me in. And we've had lots of problems since. Mainly starting 2010 until today. We've had a lot. Factually, factually being factual, we shouldn't be together. But we are. And yes, I open up a little bit about things. That's how I am. I'll talk about stuff. A lot of people are quiet and private about things. I think we need to talk about stuff. Not only can it help you in general, but it can help other people who might be dealing with things as well. But my marriage is very much less than perfect. So, uh, depression ramped up 100% from all that. Mike, why don't you just move on and quit? I'm not a quitter. I got married to be married. I didn't take an oath to Jesus because I'm not a Christian. I took an oath to myself and to my wife. For richer and poor, sickness and in health. Of course, our preacher said sickness and in death. I guess that's kind of closer to it. But anyway, depression has been a big part of my life for a lot of years. And it sucks. And there's a lot of people that, number one, wouldn't have made it this many years. You wouldn't have made it this many years. Number two, if you did make it this many years, you wouldn't be out here walking. You'd be crawled up in your bed miserable hope everybody's okay so you got different people out there that handle things differently uh, you know I choose to try to keep doing things I don't mean I've been working out for these 25 years non-stop dealing with it. That means I've tried to keep busy and just do things. From video games to, you know, playing with my kids and, you know, activities, doing all kind of stuff and riding bikes and, you know, doing projects and different things over the years. 
Uh, there's different ways of, you know, to handle dealing with depression. And I have had moments, I have had those moments where I'm crawled up in the bed and, you know, contemplating a lot of things. And I still contemplate a lot of things a lot of the time. So, a depression is a powerful, mind-altering sickness. It's the equivalent of the strongest cigarette, the strongest drug, the strongest alcohol that a person can be, you know, uh, addicted to, uh, mind-altering, uh, if I'm saying it correct, if I'm kind of saying what I want to say. It's kind of hard to think what I'm trying to say. But anyway, it's a very powerful uh, thing, <laughs> chemical that's in our body. So, and I can see other people suffering. I can see a couple of kids on my bus that have problems. And I don't think it's just, I don't think their problem is, well, mom took my phone away. I can see some problems with a couple of these kids. So depression can strike you at any age, at any time. Any little thing can trigger it. It just so happens that I had two major kind of big things trigger mine, and that's a back and marital problems. So, anyway, be mindful of that. Look at people, pay attention to people, listen and talk, be there for people as best you can. Because you never know who you might can help. So let's get this video ending. It's a long video. Today I'll be doing tricep, shoulder and back. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I ain't gonna push too hard on those things this week just get a good workout i say that but i'll probably do something crazy so uh anyway guys hope you enjoyed this little walk and talk give you a little something to think about and uh hope everybody has a good day good weekend if you get one if not enjoy what you get and uh yeah like share subscribe comment all that good stuff to the body beat down if you would please I'm trying to grow this channel to 10 million subscribers and everybody in there taking part in the community so we can try to help make the world a better place. All right. Get up, get out, get rad. Do it to it. We'll see you next time on the Body Beat Down. See ya. Get up, get out, get mad, and do it, do it!